Today we'll be revisiting my Roscoe purebred barrel. Last time I put some hand loads through it, and today we're going to see how well I can shoot it with some factory ammo. But first we're going to take a look at the current condition of the barrel by looking through a bore scope. There's not a whole lot to see here. It looks like your run-of-the-mill mass-produced barrel. The throat looks good enough. You can see horizontal tool marks from the button being pulled through the bore. The gas board has a bit more wear on it than I would expect. And here's a look at the crown. Next up, we'll take a look at the equipment and then head to the range. The barrel was fitted into an inspected upper receiver, and the barrel nut was torqued to 40 foot-pounds after greasing the threads with Aero Shell 64. A bolt from Psyonix closed on a no-go gauge, so I swapped out the BCG with one from Classified Defense, which closed on a go gauge and did not close on a no-go gauge. The handguard is free-floated. A 3-inch bag rider has been attached to the handguard to fit the front rest. Short screws were used with a bag rider to avoid contacting the barrel. An A5 receiver extension is installed with an A5-2 buffer and Sprinco green spring. The trigger is a Geisley two-stage super dynamic three-gun trigger. Ten rounds were fired prior to shooting this first group to the barrel and zero the scope. The scope is a Vortex Viper 6.5 to 20 by 44. Scope ring torque was confirmed at 15 inch pounds. Magnification is set at 20 and parallax is set at 100 yards. The barrel will be pulled with a chamber chiller between each group. A chronograph will log the velocity of each shot. The chronograph is placed 8 yards from the rifle to avoid the muzzle blast triggering the sensors. A shade is used to block direct sunlight and prevent errors caused by reflections. A Mantis X10 Elite is mounted to the front of the handguard. This is an accelerometer that will grade each shot based on how steady the rifle was at the moment of firing. And the groups will be measured by the Ballistic X app. I'll be shooting 30 shots per group because I don't only shoot 5 shots at a time when I use my ARs. All groups will be fired at 100 yards, which is verified with a laser rangefinder. The point of aim is a small circle at the bottom of the target. The rifle is zeroed, so the point of impact is higher than the point of aim. I do this because it's hard to have a precise aiming point if I keep shooting holes in it. To keep the rifle as steady as possible, the rifle will be shot off a bench with a front rest and a rear bag. Wind will be monitored with a ribbon. Each group will take about 4 minutes to shoot and will be edited down to about 15 seconds. Today, I'll be shooting four different types of ammo. First up, we have two cheap 55 grain loads that I've used for general plinking and nothing too serious. They are PMC Bronze 55 grain and PMC x 55 grain. After that, we'll move on to what I would consider a premium load, which is Federal Gold Medal 77 grain Sierra Match King. Last, we'll finish up with AAC 77 grain OTM, which is very inexpensive for what it is, and I'm interested to see how it compares to Federal Gold Medal. All right, let's do it. And here's a close-up of the group, as well as the individual data points from the, from the Mantis and the Chronograph. The data is color-scaled so that the highest values are in red, middle values are in white, and low values are in blue. The bullet holes are marked in the order that they were shot. So hole number one was shot number one, and hole number 30 is shot number 30. So, if you're so inclined, you can match up each data point with each shot. Alright, and here is the main takeaway info. The velocity was 2826 with an SD of 32. Mean radius was 0.88 MOA and a group size of 4.1 MOA. And next up we have PMC x 55 grain. So, you'll notice there are only 29 shots in this group. I had a malfunction, racked out the round, and forgot to load a new one into the magazine. So, we've got a 29 shot group. Anyway, the average muzzle velocity is 3047, which makes the x tac about 200 feet per second faster than the PMC Bronze. They both have the same SD at 32. The x tac shot a tighter group than the Bronze with a mean radius of 0.79 MOA and a group size of 3.5 MOA. Next up, we're going to shoot what I would consider a premium load. It's Federal Gold Medal, 77 grain Sierra Match King. Federal coming in with a pretty good looking group. Average velocity was 2439 with an SD of 11. Mean radius was 0.44 MOA and a group size of 1.5 MOA. For an off the shelf barrel with factory ammo, I'd say this is a pretty excellent group for an AR-15. And next up, we'll see how this compares to AAC's 77 grain OTM.
Looks like the Roscoe didn't like this load as much as the Federal. The velocity was about 100 feet per second higher than the Federal with an SD of 16. The mean radius opened up to 0.71 MOA and a group size of 2.8 MOA. Here are the overall results for the Roscoe. My shooting wasn't perfect, but it looks pretty consistent between all the different types of ammo today. For budget barrel, I'm pretty pleased with how everything turned out. And here we are back at the leaderboard. The Roscoe has increased its lead by just a little bit. The previous score was a 0.51 MOA mean radius, and that has now been improved to a 0.44 MOA mean radius. If you like the video, I would appreciate it if you could hit that like button. And if you have any feedback about the video, please write it in the comments down below. I'd really appreciate it. Let me know if you'd like to see me do anything different in the videos, or if you have a different barrel or ammo that you'd like to see tested and i'll see what i can do that'll do it i'll see you next time later